agree. Pensions next. Only 40% uh, of people in the UK have a financial plan for the future. Britain's biggest bank, HSBC, says nearly one in five do not know what their main source of income will be when they retire. The same numbers say they will rely on the state pension. Now, is a pension a luxury that most of us can't afford, or do we live in a spent now, forget tomorrow society? Tom McPhail, Head of Pensions Research at Hargreaves Lansdowne. Hello, Tom. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, thank you. Jonathan Davis, Economist and Wealth Manager. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Stephen. Hello there. But first, here's Jenny Coleshaw from Five Live Money with a Money Minute on our pensions outlook. So it seems most of us are financially unprepared for retirement. It's worrying, but not really surprising. Over the last few years, we've seen much evidence of the causes of and attempts at solutions for this. We know there are state pension changes ahead. There are public sector pension reforms. Private sector pensions in many instances are either folding or restructuring, and we're always being told we're living longer. A strain not just on our bodies, but on whichever financial bodies are attempting to fund those extra years. Today's report comes from the HSBC, which we must remember offers pension plans itself. It says only 40% of us in the UK have provisions for our later years. 50% of us expect to be worse off than our own parents in old age. It also found most of us want to reduce our working hours in our 50s by switching to a part-time job before retiring at 62. So do we want it all? Are we burying our heads or are we just resigned to not having much? For many, the clock is ticking and it could be too late to spend too much time thinking. Clock's ticking, Jenny. Well done. Thank you. Tom McPhail, why are we not saving for our futures then? It's a difficult message to sell, isn't it? You've got commodity prices going up, fuel costs are going up, you've got to buy the groceries, your household finances are a bit squeezed, and someone's coming along and they're saying, look, you've got to take this money, you're not allowed to spend it now, we want you to put it aside for the next 30 years, 40 years, and maybe eventually you'll get to enjoy it and it's it's kind of a hard message isn't it so it's it, for a lot of people it's turned out it's a great deal easier just to say look i'm just not going to think about that now i'm i'm, I'm going to spend the money today and i'll worry about tomorrow when i get to there jonathan um i think it's bigger picture than that because if you if you look at the demographics you've got the baby boomers um who came into their own in the 60s and 70s and if you think about it those people who are now retiring or retired they've largely never been out of work um they've largely had excellent pensions provided by big companies or uh, a, a civil service type jobs uh, and their house prices have gone through the roof and i think that actually the people who are retiring now Ah, well, we've retired Jonathan very quickly there because he's, uh, he's dropped off the line. I guess, Tom, yeah. just while Jonathan's uh, getting back on the line uh, with us, people might have also lost faith in pensions because there have been some pretty high-profile cases of mishandling. Uh, situations like e Equitable Life and the Mirror Group uh, haven't helped and they have undermined confidence. But I think the point that Jonathan was starting to make there around the fact that we've seen everybody else who's reached retirement, a lot of people have retired today have done well, not everybody, but there has been relative prosperity. We've had a 20-year boom through the 80s and 90s, so a lot of people have done well, final salary schemes, and so there's understandable perhaps a degree of complacency there, uh, and people are thinking, well, the state will bail me out, or my company pension scheme will bail me out, but unfortunately, of course, the picture has changed, and he mentioned the demographics, we're all living longer, that's very expensive. Uh, in 1981, the average life expectancy for a man at 65 was 14 years. Today, it's about 21 years. So, so the length of time he can expect to spend in retirement has gone up by 50%. So that's a pension that's half as expensive again. And the, the, the absolutely fundamental problem when you strip it all down is that we're not paying and we're not putting enough aside for our retirement and for a lot of people that should mean saving into a pension it doesn't have to be a pension but one way or another we need to spend less and save more and you can do all kinds of clever things with charges and investment returns and all the rest of it but at the end of the day if you don't put enough aside you're not going to have enough to live on and and only around half the adult population at the moment is saving in a pension for retirement. Uh, the government's taking steps to change that. It's bringing in these auto-enrolment plans. So over the next few years, we are all going to get stuck into a pension. We can opt out again if we want. But even that's not going to completely solve the problem because we then need to make an active choice to save a bit more. And the tax break that you get, Jonathan, it's attractive. Does it need to be more attractive? Um, 
it, it is attractive. There's no question it's the most attractive form of savings that there is. Does it need to be more attractive? No, it doesn't. Because, um, pe- I, as t- Tom says, people are complacent. But the reality is that while we have the economics that we have, where it costs an arm and three legs to get in to buy property, where um, uh, uh, the cost of living is massive, um, the economics are stupid. Therefore, people can't afford to save. Um, we, we have such a high cost of living in this country, uh, and, and the government aren't doing anything about it. They're scratching at the surface. They're, we have to have a radical change in our economics and our policies in order to lower the cost of living, lower the cost of housing. Thereby, we'll be able to put more money into any form of saving, which means that ultimately we'll take less from the state in the longer term. Yeah, but inflation's really high, isn't it? Exactly. The co- and why is inflation high? Because of the stupid economics of um, uh, basically no interest rate whatsoever. Therefore, our, uh, we, we've got the ramifications of the decimation of our currency a couple of years ago. We've got petrol at 140 a litre. We've got uh, bread and milk going through the roof. Um, uh, in other words, the basic staples of life are expensive. Then you add on um, rent or mortgages are very very expensive because they might have to uh, borrow to buy a house or pay to pay rent. The cost of living is high because of our silly economics. We need to change radically. And until we do that, I'll tell you, there's going to be a whole generation that are going to be in penury in retirement. And, and the point that Jonathan's making there, what that means is if, if, we don't, if we don't fix some of these problems, if we don't find a way to save more money for retirement, What's going to happen is that we're going to get millions of people arriving in their 60s and in their 70s and they're not going to be able to afford to retire and they're going to want to carry on working or they're going to have to carry on working because they will have nothing else to live on. If this sounds like uh, you tonight, 0500 909 693 and and lots of different age groups uh, could feed into this this evening. Maybe you're in pension age now and you don't have enough money to live on, you can pick up the phone to us, let us know uh, what it's like. Maybe in your 20s and you're thinking to yourself, it's a lifetime away. There's no way you're going to put money away in your 20s for something 40, 50 years down the line. And maybe you've left it too late. You're in your 30s, your 40s, you don't have a decent pension. 0500 909 693. We'll take your calls to this after the news and sport. It's 11.32. On digital and online. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Now, Stephen Nolan. Friday, Saturday and Sunday nights from 10. Call 0500 909 693. Calls are free from most landlines, but some networks and mobile operators will charge. Text 85058. Text will be charged at your standard message rate. This is 5 Live. Loads of calls coming in on pensions tonight. 0500 909 693. Uh, Neil from Lancashire. Hello to you, Neil. Hi. How are you doing tonight? Fine, thank you. That's good. And Paul, uh, from where are you from, Paul? Uh, I'm uh, uh, from London. I'm uh, part of the Youth Fight for Jobs campaign. Ah, so you're 24 and you're slightly older, uh, Mr Neil. You're 54. Slightly, yes. Right. Have you got a pension, Neil? No. Well, I've got one with about, about £15, £20 pound a week, I suppose. Right. Which isn't going to really get you through, my friend. No. Uh, why didn't you save earlier? Um, because I've always been in a low-paid sector job, and uh, at the end of the month, I've normally only got about £30 spare, which has uh, gone towards, um, you know, treats for the family. Mm. And, um, you know, it's, you can't push the money everywhere. And what's it feel like now? <laughs> it's just the same, really. Um, you know, I, I don't have the uh, the money and probably haven't got the time to actually sort of, like, invest it to, to make it worth um, my while. Um, I, I, I went to see an advisor on one particular occasion, and he sort of like said, "Well, you know, if you if you save two hundred pound a month, you'll get um, you know a good um, standard of living when you retire." And I just looked at him and I said, "Well, you know, I haven't got that kind of money, so um, you just dismiss it, don't you?" Tom McPhil is still with us tonight, head of pensions research at Hargreaves Landstone, as is Jonathan Davis, an economist and uh, wealth manager. Tom, what advice would? Well, is there anything can be done now for? 54-year-old Neil Taplin here. A couple of interesting observations, I think. One is, um, Neil, are you, are you, you're in employment at the moment? Yes. Okay, so 
Uh, and does the company you work for, does it run a pension scheme? Um, I'm actually self-employed at the moment. Oh, OK, OK. So um, the, the government's plans to, to get uh, all employees automatically enrolled into a pension over the next few years, that's not going to affect you either. So um, you, I mean, in terms of private savings, you're on your own with this between now and retirement. The government's bringing in plans to improve the state pension, which might give you and... Uh, uh, do you have a partner? Yes. OK, so, so you and your partner might do better under the new system that the government's bringing in than, than would have been the case previously. Um, but the chances are it's, it's, not, it's not going to be an enormously generous... Uh, standard of living in retirement. I mean, there's a question about what it's going to be like relative to, to, to the standard of living you're enjoying now, and um, you know the, the, the question of the, the replacement rate of income is, is is relevant here. But if you're going to save any money as a starting point, I'd suggest just just stick it into an ISA because, from the sound of things, you don't have a lot of savings, and rather than locking up money in a pension, that would probably be a better place to start for you. Um, well, um, you know the. The, the particular sort of high savings that I've got at the moment is actually earning me nothing, you know, in the uh, in the in the banks or the boon societies. Um, but um, you know, the trouble is that um, you know how much can you lock away for sort of like for the next um, you know 20 years when you know I need the money for today. Sure. No, I appreciate that, which is why I'm 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 trying to avoid preaching at you and telling you you must go and save 200 pounds a month in a pension because if you haven't got it, you haven't got it. No. Um, uh, you know, do what you can, save what you can, um, and uh, I, I hope that the state will look after you better in the future than has sometimes been the case in the past, that the state's pension system is going to improve. Uh, but you know, the reality is for someone in your position, I, 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 and particularly given, given your age, there, there actually isn't a lot you can do now because one of the things you need to do uh, if, you, if you're going to build up a, a good pension is, is to start young. And, yeah. and uh, listen, thank you very much uh, indeed, Neil. Paul, you've been listening to that. Yep. You're at the other end of the spectrum. You're 24, but you have been uh, out of school now since you were 16, and you have still no pension plan. Um, well, no, like um, most young people and like your last caller, um, I simply don't make enough money to save uh, um, for a pension. And what um, the You Fight for Jobs campaign uh, campaigns for is a, a £10 uh, a ten pound uh, uh, an hour minimum wage because it, it's estimated it's the ten pound an hour. Yeah, well, you need to save at least a third of your wage to actually be able to afford a decent pension and a decent standard of living when you retire, and um, that's what we campaign for. People have said that we can't afford that kind of thing, but we were in a worse economic state than this at the end of the war, and we built the NHS and we built the welfare state, and that's what the government should be doing now, rather than forcing people to to work into their old age. Here's Luke in Bourne End. Hello, Luke. Yeah, hi. What's happened to you recently, Luke? Uh, well, my job in my company was liquidated as of uh, Monday by 4.30 uh, in the afternoon. Um, I've been there since July last year. Um, I'm not going to get paid this month. Um, there's no money. And uh, by ringing up the company that obviously dealing with the liquidation... I'm not entitled to any money at all. Um, so I've got a very, a very, very small amount of money put aside for this month, uh, luckily enough, but that was only due to a family circumstance. Um, so <laughs> the future is very rocky. Um, I live with my girlfriend. We rent. We have probably between us bills the general obviously rent and everything else comes into about a thousand pounds between two of us um the money that i was getting um uh, probably left me with approximately about between two three hundred pounds a month if i was lucky anyway what are you going to do um, sorry what are you going to do well i've been given a an opportunity to um set up a company and buy back a segment of the company that was being liquidated um, where I'd be a director by me setting up myself. So you might be able to get yourself back on your feet again. But to save for a pension, how am I going to do that if, you know, it's a, it's going to be unknown territory? Sure. Um, setting up a business with no financial backing, but um, there's 
two prospects potentially that's willing to put money into starting it. That's not going to give me a salary. Yeah. That's not going to be able to make me able to physically save any money. Yeah. Now there's a, look, 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 for... there's a constant theme coming through tonight from loads and loads of people getting in contact with us, and it is that they've got, you know, obviously a pension in the long term might be a priority, but certainly in the short term there are far more. Uh, pressing urgencies for people to use their uh, their money with. Listen, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much uh, indeed. Evening to you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Tom. Quarter to 12 the time now.